Here's a video. Everybody say hi. Hi. What are we doing today? Apple picking. Apple picking. Yay! Yay, 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 yay. See you in the orchard. Oh my gosh, 21, <laughs> of the Earth Stones Girl podcast. My name is Denise. I am coming to you today from my home in Yonkers, New York, where I live with my husband and our two children. You can find me on the internet as Earth Tones Girl. I am most active on Instagram. I am also on Ravelry. And the podcast has an email address, which is earthtonesgirl at gmail.com. And we also have a Ravelry group. I don't know why I always say we. Anyway, there is a Ravelry group also um, that's got some really amazing people and knitters in there. It's the Earth Tones Girl podcast group. So if you are not already a member, please come on over and join us. And we are having a ball over there. So welcome back, everybody. It's been two weeks. Um, Friday would have been two weeks, so we click over, but that's okay. And welcome back to any returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me today, and to any new viewers, the biggest, warmest, open arms welcome to you. I hope that you enjoy the podcast. If you do, please subscribe, please hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment below. I love to hear from you all. Find out how you're doing, what you're doing, what you're making, sewing, knitting, creating. Just share your thoughts with me. I would love to hear from you. So, you guys, oh my gosh, we're at episode 21. If you had told me that I would get to episode 21 and this quickly, that a year would go by this fast, I would not believe it. Um, next Sunday, I think the 7th, the 7th, October 7th, it's also October. It's October 1st, hello. <laughs> Welcome October. And uh, we'll talk about October. October is a very special month for us knitters, so we'll talk about that in just a bit. Um, but it is October and I cannot believe that October 7th is my officially my first was when I published my first podcast episode it was about a little over 30 minutes and I was so nervous but it was so much fun it's been an amazing year and I have all of you to thank for it thank you very very much um, and gosh there's so much to talk about okay I am going to try my best to stick with my little script here <laughs> if not I'll be all over the place uh, in the last episode um, I announced a giveaway and I asked that everyone leave a comment down below about an item that they have inherited from their ancestors, um, past relatives, etc. And the responses were, oh my gosh, some of them actually had me in tears. Um, and the winner, wow, okay, so we'll, we'll get to that too. Um, so there's some prizes to be announced, the September Cal prizes. Um, giveaway prizes. I've got some knitting to share with you, some sewing too. <laughs> so let's just jump right in, you guys. Um, so wait, just do a quick little three-minute recap. Um, so what have we been up to the last couple of weeks? We've been, I cannot believe the kids have been in school a, a month already. I feel like we were just shining shoes and getting ready for the first day, and it's been a month. That is amazing to me. Um, everybody's settled in, we're in a routine, we are good, we're busy though. I don't know why there seem to be so many appointments, um, whether it's doctor's appointments, things going on, all, all good, just busy, just a lot happening. Um, yeah, so anyway, we went apple picking and that was amazing. I usually put all of my recap footage in the front of, in the beginning of the episode, so you would have seen us. Um, out in the orchard, we go to Wilkins um, Firm and Fear and Firm. It's F I R, and I always have a hard time pronouncing that. Um, 
but it's basically um, a tree and fruit farm and it's up in Yorktown Heights New York and we go there every year it's wonderful we all get on the hay wagon we ride out to the orchard the kids have a great time um, it's funny this year at first we couldn't even find the apples because there were there'd been so much rain so a lot of the apples were had little blemishes on them and the kids were like I don't want to pick those <laughs> it's like come on guys let's just have fun um, but we had a great time we, we went a little deeper into the orchard we found all the pretty apples so everyone was happy I was picking the bruised ones because I know those can be, sometimes be even sweeter so we had a great time um, yeah we've been making some apple butter and apple pancakes apple cake apple pie <laughs> lots of stuff but it's all fun um so that was our little adventure um what else do we do uh just been it's just stuff we also cj's birthday is coming up so we've been getting ready for that his birthday is actually this week on wednesday my babe is going to be four. Oh my god <laughs> and i don't know what it is but there's so many babies like new babies around me lately and everyone's like hey don't you want another one aren't they cute I'm like no I don't <laughs> sorry the factory's been shut down y'all um but it's fun it's 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 just it's fun to see all the new babies it's fun to watch my own baby grow he's such a character and the things that he says are just oh my gosh it's it's he's so grown up for four years old or for almost four years old that it just blows my mind but so we'll be celebrating his birthday um this coming week and i'll have lots of footage of that to share with you in the next episode and we also have a baby shower coming up this weekend uh, my cousin who got married last summer the kids were in the wedding party um he and his wife are due for their expecting their first child and the shower is on saturday so we are really excited to go to that and I have something to show you um, it's not going to be done in time for the shower but that's okay the baby's actually due in December so I want it to be um, I want to give it to them closer to when the baby arrives uh, but I do have something to show you it's it's sitting here that's why I keep gesturing in that direction <laughs> so I'll show you in just a bit so um that's a quick little recap um, and you know what my bathroom door keeps banging. I hope that you cannot hear it, but I'm going to go and shut the door because I have the window, as you can see the light from the window. I have the window open and it just keeps, I'll be, you don't need all of that. I'll be right back. So sorry about that. It was getting on my nerves. <laughs> so let's talk cows, you guys. Oh my gosh, the cows. What? You guys are amazing, absolutely, absolutely incredible. There are some incredible knitters in the Ravelry group. There are, let me just get my numbers right here. Um, there were 52 finished pairs of socks in the Falling Leaves Sock Cal. Oh my gosh, and every one is more beautiful than the other. They're just all, I shouldn't even say that, they're all beautiful, um, absolutely stunning socks amazing thank you all so very much for participating in that i as as i say all the time i am always blown away and overwhelmed by the response so um i'm going to so the prize was announced in the last episode i will put a picture of that up here for you uh this is going to be the prize for the september um the september prize for the falling leaf sock cal and without further ado the winner is wait hold on Hold on, hold on. Okay, this is terrible. Oh, there it is. Okay, September. <laughs> Couldn't find it in my notebook. Okay, so this is my notebook, you guys. Um, I it's just one of it's just a moleskin notebook that I keep all of my notes in, and there's quite a few um, notes per episode. I have now upgraded to a much bigger book. Uh, this is my old book. It is now completely filled with notes from past episodes. So I've upgraded. So anywho, um, the winner is Nancy, and she is Laughing Stitches. Congratulations, Nancy. I am so excited for you. Um, I will put a picture of Nancy's socks right here for you. Absolutely beautiful. Congratulations. And your prize, if you can just please send me a private message um, on Ravelry, I will get your prize in the mail for you as soon as possible. I, it will be mailed out this week. So um, congratulations, Nancy. And again, absolutely 
beautiful. Congratulations to everybody that, that got a pair of socks finished in time. Some people squeaked in right under the wire. Um, you all did an amazing job. I, I sincerely wish that I could just give a prize to everybody. I, I really wish that I could somehow, but I, did, I don't think it's actually possible. <laughs> But I'm sending lots of hugs and love and positive knitting energy your way. So thank you all again for participating. And congratulations, Nancy. Um, and in the mini sock cow, um, I think I've decided to do a halfway prize. There's so many socks. The hashtag, oh, and the hashtag, if you guys want to see a lot of the socks, um, most of them have been published or pictures have been posted on Instagram under the hashtag the falling leaves sock cal. I'll put that down here for you um, and you can see all of the socks. You can also just go to the Ravelry group and see them there. Again, beautiful. So I've decided to do a halfway prize for the mini sock garland cal. Um, people are, are making their, their mini socks and they're adding them to the FO thread. Uh, but I think to keep everybody motivated, we're going to do a Cal uh, prize giveaway at the midway point. So by October 15th, actually just before Rhinebeck, um, I'll get in an episode and we'll get that uh, prize out to the winner. And Rhinebeck is coming, you guys. Rhinebeck is coming. Oh my gosh. Today is the first. Rhinebeck is the 20th and 21st. So we are 19 days away. Wow, and there's so much that's going to happen between now and then. It's blowing my mind. There's so much to do and so much is going to happen between now and then, but follow me on Instagram. Um, this past week, as I said in the beginning, was really busy for me. The past two weeks, I don't know why, and I've just felt a little clogged up in my head, so I haven't been insta storing very much, and I seem to have not seen. I completely dropped the ball on my... Um, Insta, Instagram TV episodes. I was doing them every week, every evening, every day. And yeah, I was just getting really sluggish and tired. Um, no, I'm not pregnant for any of you that are thinking that. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, but I, it's just, you know, every now and then you just get stopped up, so to speak. You just, you feel a little overwhelmed, so you have to take a step back. And I had to do that. Um, but I'm feeling better. Everything's good. So I will be, hopefully I insta storing a lot more, um, especially in the lead up to Rhinebeck. This is, this is huge. This is our big event every year. I know a lot of people cannot come to Rhinebeck, so I will try my best to get as much footage here on the podcast, on Insta Story. Um, I actually bought a new toy to help me capture some better footage, and I'll share that with you in the next episode. The techie in me is so excited, but again, later, later, later. Um, so I will try to keep you all as in the loop as possible. Talk to as many people as possible. Uh, there's also going to be a Rhinebeck giveaway. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. It's actually more of a needles up. Um, there's going to be a needles up giveaway, and then there's going to be a Rhinebeck giveaway. So stay tuned for that. Needles up is an event that happens the day before Rhinebeck and that is hosted by Legacy Fiber Arts and it's going to be at the Best Western in Kingston on the 19th and there's a VIP hour um, I think the hours are 12 to 6 and from 12 to 1 is the VIP hour I, I if there's if I'm making any errors I will put the corrections down here uh, and then it's open to, and the VIP hour you're not missing anything it's just you can buy a ticket to get in an hour before the doors open to the public and then the public hours I think are one to six or one to seven again I'll confirm that down here and so I will give you all a little sneak peek into that VIP hour um, it's it's a lot of fun I missed it for Maryland um, travel time was ended ended up being a lot longer than we thought but doesn't matter I will be there bright and early you will I will cover as much of it as I can so stay tuned for all of that and like I said, I will, the mini sock garland cowl prize then will be announced all mixed up in there. But um, I will let you know when that's coming too. And um, I'm really following my notes closely because I'm a little scattered. Um, and the gratitude giveaway. I did a gratitude giveaway on Instagram just to say thank you to all of my new followers. Um, I've gotten a lot of new followers lately. Thank you to everybody that is following along on my making journey. It, it means the world to me that you 
find me interesting enough to follow, so thank you. And I did pick a winner. I decided it wasn't the traditional giveaway where people had to leave comments. I just picked a winner from my existing followers and announced a prize. And um, But the account is now ghost. Uh, the account is now disappeared, um, which makes me very sad. Um, so I have to pick another winner, uh, and I will do that this week also on Instagram. So. Um, please go over there uh, maybe by Wednesday or so and I will announce um, an alternative winner for the gratitude giveaway um, yeah so now it's time for the YouTube giveaway and then we'll talk knitting so wait I have to check my time also because I am I have to uh, pick up my son in a little while this episode is going to be stretched out over the course of the day um, there just isn't enough time to get it I usually record it while he's in school and I don't have enough time to get it all recorded in one shot, so it's going to be spread out. So the light may change a little bit. It's not going to be dark. I will definitely get it done before the end of the day. Um, but the light may change just a little bit, so I'm just giving you a little heads up on that. Um, but yes, the winner of the YouTube giveaway... You guys, Let's talk about that for a second. The, the comments were so touching and so heartfelt and so personal. Um, I liked every single comment. I, I gave a little heart to every single comment, but I didn't reply. Um, and maybe there was a different way to do this, but I just couldn't think of it in the moment. But I didn't want to skew the numbers with picking a winner. Um, so I didn't want to add my comments and then have to sort it all out. But once I announce the winner, I'm going to go back and comment on every single... I think there were over... 58 um close to 60 comments and it just again so touching and so personal thank you for sharing your stories with me thank you for sharing your heirlooms with me um some of the things were just were amazing some people had their one woman had her grandfather's pipes and I actually have my, my dad is still alive and well, but I actually, he doesn't smoke anymore. He hasn't smoked in years. And I love the smell of a pipe. I really do. I know it's unhealthy, but I love that smell so much. And I have my grand, my dad's um, corn cob pipe. And I also have a pipe from my grandfather. There were um, sewing machines that have been passed down. You all know that that's, you know my story with the sewing machines. Um, there were plates, china plates and brooches and cameos, uh, knitting needles. So one woman had a darning egg from her grandmother, wedding rings from parents that have passed away. I just, ugh. you know me, I'm a crier. I'm a crier. I get choked up all the time and I'm going to do it now. Um, so I apologize if that makes anyone uncomfortable. Uh, one person had wood from the barn from a 150 year old barn they saved the wood and I can't remember right off the top of my head now what they made out of it but they saved the wood from this barn and they re repurposed it and that is just amazing I believe it belonged to their grandparents and it's just I love that I love that so much it is so important to hold on to your past and keep things from your family I just think that's incredible one person also had a clock um, there's an old clock. It's gone now. I don't even know who in the family has it, but we had an old clock that used to chime every hour when we lived in Barbados. And Sue and Chelsea actually have a clock. You can hear it chiming in there. Uh, that's Legacy Fiber Arts. You can hear it chiming sometimes in the background of their podcast. And this clock sounds exactly, our old clock sounds exactly like theirs. So whenever I hear it on theirs, I get very nostalgic and dewy eyed. Um, but the winner of this giveaway is Margaret Kelly. Hello, Margaret. Oh, my phone's ringing. Hold on one second, everybody. So sorry about that, you guys. It was a wrong number. Um, so the winner, again, I apologize, is Margaret Kelly. Hello, Margaret. She is watching from Japan. Margaret, thank you so much for being here. You are the winner. And Margaret has her grandfather's well she doesn't have the originals but she hand copied her grandfather's World War II diaries that are with her grandmother and 
there we go. I don't know, I just found that so amazing that you could have something, have such a treasure like that. It just, it blew me away when I read what she wrote and I know it's, it's on the public forum, you can read it down below. I'll actually try to um, cut and paste it so everyone can read it. Um, it w it's amazing, it's just so amazing and she is now stationed in, um, she's also now in the, her grandfather was in the Navy and she is now in the Navy and the diaries and everything affected her decision to join the Navy and take on this amazing heroic lifestyle so I I thank you for your service Margaret so very much with all of my heart I do and your sacrifice thank you so very much and she has these diaries and they have inspired her and she's also a knitter so um, thank you for watching Margaret I have never sent anything as far away as Japan but I am so happy to send the alternate book and a couple of other little goodies your way. Please send me a an email at earthtonesgirl at gmail.com or you can send me a private message on Instagram. Um, just get me your address uh, and I will get your prize in the mail to you as soon as I can. And again, with a couple of other goodies thrown in there. Congratulations, Margaret. Your story just absolutely blew me away. It really, really did. And I know if anybody else reads it, it will blow you away as well. So thank you so much for sharing your story with, with all of us. Thank you. And um, I also want to acknowledge Evelyn. Hello, Evelyn. She's Evelyn B. And her family, um, she also commented on having some heirlooms and her family is from Barbados and she didn't know that that's where my family was from. So hello to a fellow Bajan, <laughs> how are you? And her family is also from Christchurch and so is our, so is my family. Uh, we live on King's Corner, which is just above, um, oh my God, why am I, comp I'm totally blanking right now. The o It's just above the Oyston's Fish Market. Why did that just go right out of my head? <laughs> so, um, Evelyn, I'm sure that you know where that is. So again, hello, hello, my friend. Hopefully I will get to see you in Rhinebeck. And um, thank you so much for watching. So that's it for prizes and cows, everybody. Um, just checking the time, I've got a couple more minutes and I think it's time for submitting. Thank you to everybody who participated and let's talk knitting, you guys. So first up, I do have an FO, a finished object for you this week. I only have one. Um, actually, I have a finished object and then I have a half fi half finished object, so a hoe, a foe and a hoe, <laughs> um, to show you. But um, here are my September socks from the uh, Falling Leaf Sock Cal. And they are done. Here they are, you guys. Let's pull back a little bit. These are my... Pumpkin spice latte socks. Woohoo! <laughs> I love them so much. Let's turn these around so you can see. This yarn is, again, Pumpkin Spice Latte by Mustache Yarn. It's a matching set, so everything matches perfectly. And I shared in the last episode how I match my colors. Um, how I get everything to start in the same place. I basically pull off, I'm more than happy to share that again, I, I pull off, measure off the length that I need for my cast on, and I do that with the two strands held together. You get two 50 gram balls, one for each sock, and I pull the strands together to get the right amount to cast on, and then I hold them together and I put a loop in, a slip knot in one and a slip knot in the other. Separate the two strands, rewrap one of them, whichever one I'm not using, and pull the slip knot so it's a big enough loop and I just leave it there until I'm ready to cast on the second. I cast on my first and your socks will start in exactly the same place. So that is my little tip for this week, but here are my socks. I used my usual go-to Malabrigo sock in the natural colorway and I had, oh dear, where is it? Wait, I have to share with you. You saw my little um, progress keeper from last week. Let me see if I can grab that really quick. Hold on, everybody. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's buried. Oh, here it is. Okay. It's buried in my bag. So here it is, attached with my other one. So this was my little progress keeper. And this was from Sucre Sucre Miniatures. I love it. So the heel 
is a little nod to the whipped cream on top of my pumpkin pie. <laughs> and here they are. So they fit beautifully. Again, it's mustache yarn, pumpkin spice latte. I think this colorway is still available in her shop right now. So if you get a chance, um, go on over and check that out. But here they are. My usual vanilla recipe, 64 stitches, 2.25 um, high, high. Show. Actually, it is a 2.25, but I used my Addy Sock Rockets for this particular pair. So there you go. Love them. And this yarn, can we just talk about the yarn? It is so incredibly, it's soft and just, if you haven't had a chance, if you get a chance to, to get a skein of mustache yarn, it is just beautiful. It feels so, so soft. It's amazing. Love it. Love these. So there you go. Um, that is it for finished objects. I've been actually sewing quite a bit, um, which you'll see in just a little bit. Checking the time again. Sorry, you guys. And yeah, let's keep going. So now on to whips. I am hoping against hope. I know people are working on sweaters. I am going to be wearing my acorn sweater. Um, all it needs is the, I've got about that much to go on each sleeve and about maybe that much on the hem. I just need to finish this thing already, get it blocked, and I will be wearing that um, to Rhinebeck on Saturday. I am going to Needles Up just to, again, fill you in and I'll tell you this again as we get closer. I'm going to be driving up on Friday morning. I will be attending Needles Up and then Indie Untangled in the afternoon. Uh, I'm going to be hanging out with the wonderful ladies Sue and Chelsea from Legacy Fiber Arts uh, and also finally getting to meet Rachel from Treehouse Knits. She's going to be staying with me at the hotel. So excited, Rachel. I can't wait. <laughs> and um, So stay tuned for all of that and then we're spending the night at the Best Western and then the next morning bright and early we are up breakfast and hitting Rhinebeck so I will be wearing the acorn sweater to Rhinebeck the next day but what I'm hoping to wear to needles up I just cast this on you guys this is the it's called the perfusion cow perfusion cowl and I will put a picture of that right here for you and it is just a big it can be scrappy, it can be one color, it is super simple. Um, it is a paid for pattern, so I cannot um, go into any real detail, but you can change colors if you want. Again, you can do it all in one color, that's not giving anything away. And I have decided to use a fingering weight mini kit, mini set that I bought uh, last year at Vogue Knitting Live. I needed some browns, you guys. I love my color. I love all the colors and everything. I absolutely love them, but I needed to, a little grounding, so I decided to go back to my roots, back to my earthy tone girl colors, and here is my cowl. I have cast on, again, I, I, this is just straight knitting. It is mindless stockinette. Um, there is, it's just a rolled cuff. There is nothing fancy on the cuff. I am so excited about this. This color is, all of the yarn is by Mrs. Babs. It is 100% superwash merino, um, no nylon at all, so it would not have worked for socks. I mean, I could have and did nylon, but I'm so happy I'm working on this. So here is the beginning of my cow. <laughs> this has to be pretty long. I'm hoping to finish it by then. If I don't, then I will be knitting it during Needles Up and I will be wearing something else, but I will let you know what I'm wearing. And um, this is the sock set. It is called, it's Mrs. Babs again, and it is called Death by Chocolate. Look at, I don't know if you can really see all of the colors. Um, let's turn it that way, I think. I think you can see them. Maybe if I pull it over here, I think you can see them a little bit better. So the colors are, this color that I'm using now is dark chocolate, and the colors are bittersweet, chocolate, bittersweet chocolate, chocolate, semi-sweet chocolate, sweet chocolate, and milk chocolate. This will be up at the top. This will be right by my neck. And I can't wait. Even Again, even if this is not finished in the next 19 days, 18 days, I cannot wait to wear this. I love cowls. I'm not a big fan of shawls. I love shawls, but I'm just, I'm not going to knit them. I've tried. I've started them. I rip them out or they sit and languish forever. So, but a cowl I will definitely wear. And this one is long enough that I can even pull it up over my head. Um, so I'm very excited. I know... Gigi from Gigi Made It 
she knit one in the most amazing colors incredible if you have a chance to go on Ravelry and check out her perfusion cowl it's beautiful it's all I think it starts brown at the bottom and then goes down to a gorgeous orange because orange is her color and just beautiful so this is um, this is going to be my cowl I am using one circular needle this time there are enough stitches to go around on the one needle and it's just I slide and keep knitting 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 it is great movie knitting sitting at swim practice wherever whatever whenever it's perfect and I'm on a size 9 uh, circular needle it's 24 inches so that is my one of my whips. Another whip is, let's pull this up. Here is another. Um, and these are just a pair of scrappy socks. These are my, I'm hoping to get two pairs done this month. Don't know, we'll see what happens. But I wanted something a little more um, Halloween-y and I thought this color, these colors were perfect. So here is my sock, you guys. And I've got my little, <laughs> <laughs> my little candy corn um, progress keeper which I love and this is this is also part of a set by Christy of the yarn yarn cafe creations hang on I showed you this in the last episode but I'll pull this all out for you there it is here are all of the colors aren't they amazing now let me see if I remember this is Honeycrisp jack-o-lantern orchard I want to say summer storm and smells like rain but you know what let's see if I if I'm if I remember hold on I've got my little card here somewhere yeah where is it you guys here it is okay honey crisp September storm which is this one jack-o-lantern which is this one honey crisp is this one this is Orchard and Smells Like Rain. So I am up to Smells Like Rain right now. This yarn is a dream. Oh my gosh, this is part of, this set is her Autumn Harvest Collection mini pack and it is five 20 gram minis, approximately 87 yards um, or 80 meters. And here you go. Love, love, love them. These are not going to be very long. I'm doing about 15, I'm on Sock Rockets 2.25 and I'm doing about 15 rounds of each color. So the leg is going to be a little bit shorter on these. Um, I'm using them sparingly because I want to get a full pair and maybe even some shorty little hand warmers if I can. I'll squeak. I want to use every single bit of this yarn. So a slightly shorter leg on this sock but this is my other one. Love it. It's so soft. It's so lovely. Just look at the speckles in there. So much color just beautiful absolutely beautiful so these that is my sock whip um, for October the phone is ringing again hold on I am back finally <laughs> that last phone call was actually perfectly timed because I had to pack up lunch and swim stuff for my son so everybody is now home the whole family's home I have got the door closed so hopefully I can finish this up in about another 20 minutes <laughs> so here we go um, so we finished off with the sock, and now it is time for the Sew Me segment. <laughs> uh, time for a little bit of sewing, and the first thing I wanted to show you was what my sock project is housed in right now. So if you recall, here is my, here's my beautiful little sock, and this is currently living in my new project bag, which is this. <laughs> Here it is. Here is my new project bag. It is simple. It is a little, it looks huge because I've kind of got it up front, but um, it's actually not that big. I, this is sort of a prototype and I like to do a lot of my um, test sewing in just a plain white, either a muslin or this is a, <coughs> excuse me, this is a white denim that I used. Um, I just bought the fabric from Joann's. I don't know, it was on sale with a coupon. Thank goodness for Joann's. And I ordered the ribbon also from Joann's. Um, you can't buy it in the store, but you can order it online. So I got it from there, just, um, just tape measure, twill, cotton twill ribbing. Absolutely love it. I did not fray check the ends, but fray check is just something you can put on the ends of um, a cut 
fabric to stop it from fraying. Uh, so I didn't get to do that yet. And yeah, it's this pattern is by In Color Order. Uh, the name of the maker is Jenny B. I think she is on Instagram. I'll put all of her information here for you. Uh, and it's her drawstring bag tutorial. I've never made a drawstring bag considering I sew quite a bit and I've never made a drawstring. I've made zipper pouches, I've made sort of that all over the wrist on the go project bags but never a drawstring bag. Um, not a project bag like this. I've made little ones for the kids but just have the drawstring on one side um, but not like this one and I'm really really happy. I think it's a tad, you know what, it's actually the perfect size and I think it's a little stiffer because of the fabric. Um, but there is something I want to add. I want to be able to hang it from, I like to walk and knit and, or just if I'm picking up the kids and I'm waiting somewhere, I always sort of have knitting hanging from my backpack or hanging from my um, belt buckle. So I need to just add a little strap in there so that the bag can still be relatively open so I can reach what I'm working on, but I need to put two little hooks uh, or two little, I don't know what you want to call them, little hangers, uh, on the inside here so that I can clip a little carabiner and then hook that on and knit as I go. So I might, this bag is a little bit long to have, and a little big to have hanging, so I may just modify the pattern a little bit. Um, it's a free tutorial, so um, I'm not giving anything away, but I'm definitely going to play around with the size a little bit more. Uh, but I did line it. I love the fabric I lined it with. Isn't that great? So it rolled, and it's actually, this size is actually great if you want to turn it into a little yarn bowl. It's the perfect, perfect size for that. You can, you can sit it by your bed, sit it on a table. It's so perfect. I love how this looks rolled down. Uh, I also got this lining um, sort of fall themed plaid from Joann's also. And I like the way the pattern makes the lining a half an inch smaller. For those of you that sew and, and make bags, the lining is done a half an inch smaller than the outer fabric so that it doesn't peek through. So if you wanted it to peek through, that's another little modification you could make. You could also make the lining fabric a half an inch bigger than the exterior if you wanted it to really poke through on the top. Again, little ways to play with it. That's the beauty of making. You can make it however you want to make it. It's, it's the choice is yours, sky's the limit. So yes, yeah, so here is my lining fabric. All of the fabric, everything came from Joann's. I absolutely love it, but what I love most of all, and this is a little special thing here, that is also very satisfying to do. <laughs> There's something about closing a drawstring bag that is just very satisfying. I want to share with you this beautiful gift that was sent to me by Mars, who is Hey Brownberry on Instagram. She's very special to me. I've talked about her many times on the podcast, and she sent me a little um, gift for my birthday. And there it is, you guys. Isn't that, wait, let me bring it over here so you can see it a little better. Isn't that pin adorable? It says maker, and I absolutely love it. And I just love that I have this one pin on my bag right in the center, and that is what I am. That is what many of us are, a maker. I love it. So thank you so much, Mars, for this. Um, I love it so much, and it was so thoughtful. It is a new pin that is now in, um, Mars is the co-owner of a site. You know what? Let's talk about that in a second because I'm going to talk about Mars in my Fiber Friends segment. So let's save that and I'll bring this back out in just a minute. I'll just finish up talking about the bag, but I really want to talk about that um, in more detail. But so anyway, here's the bag. Uh, I will continue to show continue. I will continue to show you any little modifications that I make, but I am very very happy with how this turned out. It was so the bottom is boxed, which is really really great. So it will stand up perfectly on its own. And this was easy. This pattern was so quick and easy. Uh, it's, I haven't seen construction like this before, the way the bag was put together. You're basically sewing all of your pieces together in one long strip, and then you fold it and you, you know, sew your seams open, and you iron your seams open. It's just very, very well made. This was very fast to make. It took me longer to cut the fabric than it did to actually sew it together. So 
I love this bag and I think that some prize winners might be getting these bags with their monthly gifts. Woohoo! <laughs> so I'm really excited to make these. Uh, and I know a couple of people have asked whether I'm opening an Etsy shop. <sighs> and I've been toying around with the idea for quite some time now. I still am not sure. I might, I might actually follow Rachel's lead. Um, Rachel, who's Treehouse Knits, she has a shop. She doesn't keep it fully stocked. So there's no pressure on her there. She loves to sew just like I do. She sews a lot of project bags just like I do. And sometimes you use them and sometimes you don't. Or you just want to try a new construction but you don't necessarily need the bag. And then she pops it in her shop for sale. Uh, and I think I might try that method. That way there's no pressure um, to keep the shop stocked. There's no pressure to, um, I don't know create I mean I have a logo created already um, I've got cards coming I do have something else I want to share with you in just a bit um, yeah so I don't know I, I think that might be a good way to ease myself into the, the shop making I'm not even sure yet I might just leave it to the professionals for a little while I don't know but you know what not going to commit myself if it happens great if it doesn't we'll see what happens so yes and speaking of prize winners getting these bags and let me know what you think do you like them plain let's talk about that for a second do you like the plain bags I think that's what happens to me sometimes with bag making I get very excited about prints whether they're knitting themed or otherwise and then I use them for a little while I'm like okay well I'm done with that I'm let me move on but I find I always seem to go back to the plain bags it shows off if you've got pins you want to show off if you want to add embroidery to this bag that would be beautiful to add embroidery to this uh, applique anything like that it would be amazing so I like the plain bags let me know what you think do you like plain ones do you think plain ones for prize uh, for prizes or do you think a print because I've got a lot of knitting themed prints so let me know in the comments what you think so that is that and I also will be including <laughs> I decided to I wasn't ready to do an enamel pin because I don't have a shop. I'm not so big that I need pins right now. Um, and they're a little expensive to me. I'm just chill trying to figure out the pin game, so to speak. But I did decide to try stickers. And here's mine. Am I holding it the right way? <laughs> here is my sticker, you guys. I had vinyl stickers made. I love them so much. There they are. They are my logo. <laughs> do my happy dance I love them I am so proud of them I love them so much I'm going to be ordering more I just I wanted to check and see how they would look in the first shipment um, I only ordered 50 up front so I'm definitely putting in another order today or tomorrow for many more and I will also be handing these out at Rhinebeck so if you see me don't forget to ask for one uh, so here they are my little pins and my logo was designed by Leanne um, Coppola who is on Instagram and she's just an incredible incredible graphic designer so thank you again Leanne if you're watching thank you so much I love them. so you're getting a bag and a sticker and yarn and all kinds of fun things I am feeling very very generous I want to give back what I have been given so stay tuned for more of these so that is that and let's go on to my other sewing project I am very excited about this. I'm not sure how I'm going to show it, but as I said, my cousin and his wife are having a baby and I wanted to make them a quilt. So here it is. Let's see if I can do this properly. Here is the quilt, you guys. Oh my gosh. You know what? Let's just go like this and I'll start at the top and kind of pull this up so you can see it. There it is. I love it so much. This um, this was a charm pack and this quilt is called, it's a simple, it's called the Charm Squares Baby Quilt and it is by, uh, Elizabeth Hartman, um, of Sew Mama Sew. This is her pattern and it is very, very easy. This is a, uh, and I even improvised on the top. It's supposed to be a five inch, um, strip and I just sewed two, two and a halfs together because it's what I had. Um, and basically you're taking a charm pack. Uh, it's a free pattern. So again, I'm not, 
um, giving too much away and it is you know it'll be easier to see on here basically what you're doing is you take your charm pack and you cut the squares and then arrange them so I had everything laid out on a um, on a design board it's a big board that I use to sort of lay out my quilt blocks to figure out how I want them to be arranged and you just arrange that here I'll go on this side again the lights blowing this out just arrange them however you want and you just sew the strips across sew each strip and then sew all of the sew the squares together and then you sew the strips together all the seams are done open and there you go this was literally done in a I did this in a couple of hours um, CJ was at school and I basically did this while he was at school including all of the cutting it was so fast I absolutely love it I love these blocks and this particular charm pack uh, again this is all it was 40 squares 45 inch squares and the charm pack is called mischief that's the name of this particular one my they're having well I shouldn't say what they're having until it's here I know what they're having but I thought this was just perfect you can probably tell the gender by the colors um so I love it I love it so very much it's very fall like it's it's interesting it can be very unisex I just I love it so much. So here it is, you guys. This is my other project, and I'll I'll insert a picture for you, um, so you can see a little bit better. I took a really good picture of it on my clothesline hanging outside. So it really, I'm really really proud of it. Again, it was very very easy for any of you that are interested in. Here, let's go up a little bit. If any of you are interested, here's some more of the squares. If anyone's interested in sewing this, I will absolutely link to this pattern down below. Again, this is the Charm Square Baby Quilt by Elizabeth Hartman of Sew Mama Sew. And there it is. It's lovely. Wait, let's, let's drape it so you can see. <laughs> I'm very, very proud of it. So anyway, the quilt top is now done. But what I still have left to do, let's fold this to make it a little neater. What I still have left to do then is to make the quilt sandwich, um, which is your top your batting and then fabric for the bottom and I do have some fabric I think I have this fabric this particular print I think I have more of this in blue but I have to take a look in my stash and see what I have and make your sandwich quilt it bind it label the back I always put labels on my quilts and then I'm good to go so that is going to be really really great uh, I'm not giving that to them for this weekend for the shower that is going to wait until closer to when the baby is actually born it's a December baby so quilts will absolutely be necessary or a quilt will be necessary either for the car or the crib just walking going for a walk if you want to just wrap it around I used to do that with both of my children I put them in the sling and then put a quilt around them as we walked and that was always really great I could drape it all the way over them tucking it on the side so that is my sewing you guys i am very very proud of my projects they were so fun to make everything was relatively quick and easy to do i do like much more complicated quilts but um i think to get my feet wet again and get back into the quilting pool i think this was the perfect project it was quick instant gratification totally motivated me so yeah those are my projects for this episode i've showed you the pin oh i also got but i'm not sure about these either Let's go back. I'm kind of all over the place again. I also got buttons. <laughs> These, I have more buttons coming. Um, so here's the button, just a plain, simple button. Um, I don't have very many of these. I think there may be 50 of these as well. I might order a couple more. Um, it's a little offset, and I wasn't sure that I liked that, but the more I look at it, the more it's growing on me. And I think it's it's just the design of the actual logo itself. So the way it had to be done, it was just set just offset a little bit but there are buttons so there we go and so there's buttons and stickers and sewing and knitting and it's all good so let's um, pause for just a second we're gonna talk about um, some fiber friends and uh, you know I was gonna do a QA and a in this episode but I think it's already a little bit long so let's save the Q&A for the next episode uh, hopefully that will be up sooner rather than later because I've got lots more to share with you but we don't want this one to be too long. So let's do um, Fiber Friends and then we will finish up this episode. I'll be right back. 
So to finish up, it is time, well, almost to finish up, I want to talk about uh, and share some love of my fiber friends. Um, that segment went over really well last episode, so I really want to keep that going. And this week I am going to, I have two people that I really want to talk about, or three. There's two and one, and then one. <laughs> You'll see in a minute. Uh, and one is Mars. I want to talk about her some more. Uh, she is Hey Brownberry on Instagram. She has the Hey Brownberry podcast on YouTube. She's lovely. So lovely. So amazing to listen to. So talented a maker. She is predominantly a knitter. She does crochet. She dyes yarn with uh, her daughter. I think both of them. I know she does with her, one of her daughters, Hidachi, but I'm not sure about the other daughter. Maybe both. But she dyes yarn, and she does sell her dye, uh, her dyed yarns. And I know, I think she mentioned in her last podcast episode, which came out yesterday or today, um, that she's having an update really soon. So by the time I get this loaded, probably tonight or first thing tomorrow morning, uh, then you can go over and check her out uh, when her check out when her next update update will be. And she also, so let's go back to the pins for just a minute. She also co-owns Maker's Merch. And if you go onto Instagram, uh, I'll put that down here as well. If you go onto Instagram, Maker's Merch is sort of an, it's a community. It's things made by makers for makers. And she co-owns it with, um, oh dear, Celtic Cast On. I'm, I think it's Kelly. Forgive me, but again, I'll put it right down here for you. And they own this, they co-own this, and they've got amazing pins. I have featured some of their other pins in the past. Uh, they have a Nitrovert pin and a Maker's Community pin. Uh, I'll take a picture and put that up here for you too. And um, go and check her out. These are new pins that they are now making. They're beautiful. Mars is just someone that should be followed. She has such a positive peaceful message in everything that she does. There is an aura about her that is calm and centering. You, you instantly sit back and relax when you're watching her podcast. Um, she likes to podcast in different places. One episode she was in a little sort of like a rainforest area. And she lives in Florida and it was just so wonderful. She's just amazing. So please go and check out uh, Mars. She's the inspiration behind this entire podcast, so she means very, very, very much to me. I love you, Mars. Thank you so much. So, um, I hope you're watching. Hi. Thank you for my pin again. And my other fiber friends are the your Girls in the Yarn Girls in the Yarn Cafe, and they are a mother-daughter team, um, Christy and Tristan. Christy is the mom, Tristan is the daughter, and Christy owns Yarn Cafe Creations, and Tristan owns Dragon Horde Yarns, and together their podcast is The Girls in the Yarn Cafe. So please go and check them out. They, Chris, Tristan, Christy, I'm sorry, is the dyer behind this yarn, and she also did, she's also the dyer behind, uh, it was the Handmaid's Tale collection. Uh, I had knit a pair of socks under his eye a couple of months ago, so, um, Yes, she's an amazing dyer. They both are. They're absolutely incredible. I've got some more of their yarn over here somewhere. And gorgeous, gorgeous. You should see their, they have a Harvest Horror collection. They've got, that is Christy that has that. Tristan is doing, um, she has a beautiful pattern, Find Your Way sweater that she just published. Uh, she just talked this morning about getting a new, um, fingerless mitt pattern out to be tested so they are very it's prolific the word very very prolific knitters there's and dyers there is just so much coming from their corner of the world of our making community please go and check them out their podcast is wonderful and entertaining and Tristan has this very sort of I don't know if Cavalier, fly by the seat of her pants she just has this way about her that just makes me laugh and smile and inspires me to let out my crazy every now and then so thank you both so much for inspiring me um and those are my three fiber friends that i wanted to talk about this week i i know that kristen and tristan christy and tristan will also be uh, manning the door at neil's up so if you get a chance to come and uh, attend that event you will meet them 
Um, unfortunately, Mars is not coming, but she's in Florida. One day, our paths will cross. We will meet. She's going to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival in March. That might be a stretch for me. I don't know if I can make it. Yeah. I haven't traveled that far away from my babies yet. I don't know that I'm ready. <laughs> uh, but one day, one day, um, we will meet up. I, I, I know that that will happen, and it will be a very profound meeting so i look forward to that i really really do so um yes that covers just about everything you guys that i wanted to cover in this episode oh you know what we can do one quick q a question because again it ties right back into mars again <laughs> um she asked her question was what as a fellow tea drinker or tea lover what is my favorite flavor tea and that is so simple to answer it is english breakfast tea I love it. It is my favorite. It is my dessert in the evening after dinner. I drink it in the evening. I drink it in the afternoon. I drink it in the morning. I drink it all the time. Just because it's English breakfast, I'm not pigeonholing myself. <laughs> it is my favorite. I love the cream. I take mine with milk, with cream and sugar. Not milk, cream. Hmm. There's a huge difference. Try it and see. <laughs> so that is my that is my question for today. And I just found another. I typically drink Twinings, Twinings, Twinings English breakfast. Love that one. But I just found another one that I had at a restaurant. Um, Carolyn and Ellen. Uh, Carolyn is Bloom Handmade Studio, and Ellen is Knit by a Lefty. My two fiber knitting besties and uh, they just took me out this past Friday for my birthday we went out to dinner and for dessert I had English breakfast tea and I think the brand was Richie Riki R-I-S-H-N-I Richney I don't remember if anybody knows please leave it down below because I didn't keep the envelope and I can't remember the exact name so if this is ringing a bell for anybody please let me know in the description box down below it was amazing it had a slight it took the English breakfast up a notch and I really would love to get some more of that. So let me know if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, yes, so that is that covers Q&A for this week. And last thing I wanted to mention, it is October, you guys. Does anyone know what that means in the knitting world? It means it is Socktober. <laughs> So lots of socks will be coming out this this month. I am so excited about it. Big socks, little socks. I am a little behind on my own mini sock garland, so I got to catch up on that. Um, you can't have a delinquent host. I just that's just I can't do that. I have to catch up, which I will. And you know, no pressure. I'm taking the pressure off myself. If I finish my cowl by Rhinebeck, great. If I don't. I have got many other things I can wear, so I'm not worried about that at all. Um, so yes, check out the hashtag uh, Socktober. A lot of people today, uh, again, today's October 1st, a lot of people have already started using the hashtag. It is a big sock knitting month, so go. There's also, go and check out Extreme, Extreme Knit, I think is her name. I'm blanking. I think that's her Instagram. Again, all down here. And... Um, but go and check her out. She's doing a really big cal as well. There is the monster sock cal going on. Um, there are a lot of cals happening, a lot of sock cals. So please continue to knit your socks for my cal, the falling leaf sock cal. Continue with your mini socks. And thank you so much for joining me today. Um, as always, I am very, very grateful, very grateful that you take time to spend with me, to share some time with me and my projects and everything else. So thank you again. Happy knitting, happy sewing, happy making. I will see all of you again very, very soon. Congratulations again to all of the prize winners. Um, again, send me your information and I will get the prizes out to you as soon as I can. Hopefully this week, although it's a busy week, so if not, then first thing Monday of next week, I will get everything out. Actually, Monday's a holiday. They're gonna go out as soon as I can. <laughs> Let's put it that way, as soon as possible. I know everybody's anxious, so. Um, let me, I think that's all I want to say. Yes, I started to digress for a second. Thank you again. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. You're all the best. Bye.